Is ambition a good thing? A person who has no ambition probably doesn't do much <laughs> and will not uh, be motivated. So there is something to be said for ambition, but the problem comes when it is selfish ambition. The letter from St. James today speaks about that, and also we hear the gospel and talks about the whole concept of not striving to be first or what have you as an end in itself or for selfish reasons. Um, many years ago, I grew up in the Chicago area, and there was a local man who used to be featured on television in that market that he would be interviewed and give speeches and so forth. And one of the things he used to talk about was the fact that he was very happy that he was given the gift of life because he had been conceived out of wedlock. He was mindful of the fact that he could have been aborted. So he was urging people to be very mindful of the importance of life. Well, the man took a turn for the worse because he became politically ambitious. And in doing so, he jettisoned all of his principles. He wanted to run for president. He actually did. He did not win the primary. But the problem is that selfish ambition can result in a person not being true to his own principles, perhaps putting others. I mean, certainly Hollywood itself is capitalized on the concept of a character who makes his way to the top of the ladder through um, stepping out people along the way. This is uh, not something to be supported. Uh, obviously, something has to be in charge, but it always should be able to find a service and not as a way of warning over people or as an object in and of itself. Um, one of the things that Cardinal Rassiger spoke about many years ago, um, he's now, of course, called Benedict, but the time he worked with Pope John Paul, he told the bishops, and I'm sure you're speaking from some knowledge, that the dioceses that they now have are the dioceses that they should be serving, not be looking at a diocese and a stepping stone into some sort of advancement. So what we're talking about is, even in the church, there can be this idea of what can I do to get ahead, as if that's the main point. One of the unfortunate aspects of the so-called women's liberation movement is the quest for power, uh, thinking that men have power and so forth, women don't, and, and, so, and, and so on. Well, this sometimes is applied to the priesthood, or some radical feminists will think, well, the women ought to be priests because priests have power, we want power, we want, well, otherwise we're not equal. Well, any man who wants to be ordained a priest, who's doing it because he wants some sort of power over other people, should not be ordained. That is not the idea. The idea that Jesus gives to us, which we should think about, because our culture does not agree with it, is that to be a person who has charge of other people is to be a person who must serve these people. And it takes various forms. I mean, most people have charge of someone. It could be at work, a person at the boss, or people who are mothers and fathers and children at home. And um, it might, might even be in, in, in uh, regards to running a parish group or ministry that the person is responsible for. You know, the point is that to be in a position of responsibility of this type requires a certain getting out of oneself. I mean, <laughs> no one likes to work for a person who's bossy, or who, whose I, main idea is I'm in charge and I want everybody to know this. I mean, this is really not um, in any way a Christian concept of what it means to head anything. And of course the parents themselves um, are supposed to um, serve their children. The scriptures speaks about the father's not nagging their children and so forth. I mean, 
even parents are not supposed to lord it over their children. But certainly children are not, are not supposed to run the household. It doesn't take long to understand that parents, in a given case, perhaps are very permissive and their children and show it because there's no discipline there. Disciplining a child is an important service that parents perform. It's not to be an exercise of ego. Ego often leads to children being punished too strictly or, or even unreasonably or, or people wanting to control others, which is really not the point. Jesus himself gives the example. I mean, we see our Lord uh, going through his public ministry. Uh, sometimes I, I think that, that the tendency is to think that Jesus had no difficulties during his public life and everything was fine until he went to Calvary and then he went into his passion and he died on the cross. Well, actually, Jesus had many temptations. And one of the recurring temptations was the temptation for him to seek power earthly power. The devil first um, <clears throat> suggested it to Jesus, taking him up to a high mountain and showing him all the kingdoms of the world and telling Jesus, look, if you just compromise yourself, bow down before me, I will give you all these. Of course, Jesus would hear none, none of them. But it was a recurring temptation because later on, after Jesus said the people of the loaves and the gospel of John, he wanted to make him a king. And John said that Jesus went to the mountains and he left very fast. He did not come to save the world through being any sort of a king. In fact, political power does have a legitimate place, but it will never save the world. And this is something to think about. Jesus himself, uh, the night before he died, took the form of the household slave and he washed people's feet. You might not think too much about this because it's not part of our culture to wash people's feet, but in those days, I mean, I've been to the Middle East, there was no real grass there except for around the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River. People walk outside without shoes on or with sandals. So the household slave would wash their feet. Feet were considered a very base part of the body, and the Middle Easterners still considered them that way. So we lose some of the translation when we read about this, but it was not glamorous, and people were shocked when Jesus did this. But Jesus did this because he did everything, uh, he did everything he did out of service. And ultimately he went to the cross. He went to the cross, he died, and his death meted out to the slaves and common criminals. Jesus died a death that would give him a bad name. For the longest time, the Christians didn't use the crucifix as one of the logos of their faith because they were shocked at what happened to Jesus. But Jesus voluntarily underwent these things. Uh, he did not see himself. And this is something that we must think about. He was disinterested in what he would get out of it. He poured himself into what he needed to do. Certainly, uh, many of us are beneficiaries of people who have lived lives of selfless sacrifice and did not see themselves. I remember visiting a number of convents that are now empty, small rooms. What are these small rooms for? Well, these were the rooms where the nuns used to live. Each nun had, had a cell, a small cell. She forsook her right to own property, and to have a family of her own. She pledged obedience to a superior on earth. And uh, the nuns, many of them were quite heroic. They were back home of the Catholic school system for many decades in our country. We're all indebted to them, but again, they were selfless people working for the welfare of others. Yes, one of the nuns, of course, would be elected superior, but even superior was supposed to be a person of service. Pope Benedict himself, elected in 2005, there was nothing he was ambitious for, I can tell you, he was already 78 years of age. He would he had asked Pope John Paul II, who had been his boss before, for retirement a couple of times, and it was not to be. Cardinal Ransom was elected Pope, and uh, now he's 85. Uh, he's doing it out of service. Not, it was not anything it was an issue for him. It would not be good to have somebody uh, running the show, so to speak, and 
the ambitious of that project. Tony Lusopoulos makes the best kind of leader. Many people um, will have families and so forth, and of course parents have to make many sacrifices for their children. The best parents are those who do precisely that, who aren't seeking themselves. In our Western world, of course, we need committed parents, we need families. We certainly can be more sizable families because the population is really declining. In Europe, it's even more of the case. Um, the point is not being in charge of things, but the of being in charge of helping other people. Uh, we can be very grateful of our own ancestors, and some of whom came over as immigrants. Many of them separated from their parents and they never saw them again. They came on a boat, maybe with a five dollar bill clip to their shirts or whatever. And came to this world and started life. And they started, they worked very hard for the families and to make, um, to make a life for themselves here. But they were people of faith. And we must be people of faith in order to put things in the right perspective. Otherwise, if we don't uh, use our faith and we will start grasping for things in this world. We will become attached to our own glory, our own. Uh, wealth or whatever it might be. We want people to notice us, think that we're great or, or what, what have you. Uh, Jesus correctly, the apostles who were already arguing about who was the greatest, who was the greatest. He said that the one who serves is the greatest. And then he took a child and said, whoever is like a child. A child usually has no consensus. So we ask the Lord today to help us to live the way we should be living as servants of God servants of others.